Welcome to the Canning with Mehulisa video series. Today we're going to steam process some sweet cherries, Bing cherries to be exact. Uh, here we are, we got our jars uh, set out and uh, got my uh, Tadler reusable lids, which I'm quite happy with, and there's a little pan to boil them in. I'm going to give the jars a good washing, hot water, and uh, soap just to get uh, some of the residue off and uh, then we're going to uh, put, be putting them in the oven for a little bit. So here we're going to be putting the jars in the oven at about uh, 250 or so, 225 to 250 for about 25 minutes. This is a sanitizing uh, step. It doesn't sterilize the jars, it sanitizes them. If, if they're quite clean uh, if you gave them a good wash and then you uh, put them in the oven like this, you'll be safe with the jars. Next we're going to put water in the water pan. I just use cold water, although I guess you could use hot water. I've read though that cold water heats up faster. There we go, indicating it's about a half an inch distance from the top of the water to the edge of the pan where the juice kettle sits. And I'm going to set it at uh, somewhere around high there to get the, uh, you know, just to get the water boiling. I'll put the lid on the water pan while it heats. And then I'll uh, bring up the boil quickly. Here I got my Bing cherries in the sink. Just enough water to cover them. Looks like somebody snuck a cherry there. There's a pit floating. So I'm just gonna rinse them back and forth a little bit uh, just to get any residues off um, and uh, get them ready for the pan. Here we got the uh, fruit basket and we're filling that up with the cherries. I've put the basket on the juicer, the body of the juicer. It's sitting in the juice kettle on top of the water pan. You can see I've got it mounted up there nicely and the lid has a nice dome on it so you can uh, fill that basket up quite a bit. So again, here are my Tattler lids and rings. I've uh, had a lot of good success with this product. Uh, I've always felt bad about buying new lids and uh, the domes and bands every year uh, seems just a little bit wasteful. There's a lot of uses for the old lids, but even so, I've been investing in these Tadler reusable lids, and as I said, I've uh, had a good amount of success with them. Putting a little bit of water in there just to cover them, and uh, I'll take it over here to the stove. Put it at uh, high heat to get the water boiling. There we go, the water's come up to a boil. And the uh, lower it just a little bit there so we don't uh, get any of the rubber melting to the bottom. And I set it for about three and a half, five and a half minutes there. Here we have uh, the cherries been in there now for a little while. I just wanted to show you how the steam is coming up through the fruit. So it's boiling in the water pan. It comes up through the juice scuttle, through the funnel, and up into the fruit. And uh, I want to give you an image of the water boiling here. Now there you can see that's uh, quite a furious boil. It's really going to town there. And that's a little too high. Um, probably don't need to worry about it with cherries, but if I was doing something that would take over an hour processing, I would like to have that boil a little lower. Here I'm adjusting the heat uh, just so that I don't have such a furious boil. It's all dependent on your stove where you're going to set it. And uh, now that the water's boiling, I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes and uh, start the processing. 
So it's had a chance now to uh, uh, level out with the temperature, and there you go. There's the image of your steady boil. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, reasonable. You're not going to burn through your water as fast, and it produces plenty of steam uh, to, to get the job done. So we've got the processing going here. I'm just checking the, uh, the caps and the, the bands and uh, you know, looking at the top of the juicer just to make sure things are going along. Uh, maybe I'll check the water in the pan, turn the heat down, that kind of thing. So it's good to stay in the kitchen, uh, pay attention to what's going on so we don't get a burned water pan. So that looks like the... Uh, uh, the uh, bands and lids have boiled for five minutes. I turn that temperature off, set them in the back, and leave them in the hot water. And then they'll be ready to use when it comes time to uh, cap the jars. So it's been about 15 minutes. I'm going to take a peek. You can see there uh, the cherries are a little swollen and actually have sunken down a bit. So the steam is doing its job. And it looks like the jars are done heating in the oven there as well. So we'll uh, turn the temperature off. And once again, we'll leave, uh, we'll leave the jars in the oven, keep them warm. I just want you to see here the steam that's escaping from the lid. That is something you want to see, okay? So a lot of the competitor juicers, they fit quite tightly. Uh, the parts and so you don't see a lot of steam uh, releasing so what you get is excess condensation on the inside and a diluted juice so here it's a little bit longer uh, further along in the processing and you can see actually the lid bobbing up and down there a little bit and releasing steam uh, again that's what you want to be happening so after about 30 minutes uh, let me take another peek here get to uh, get to see there's a little bit of juice coming down right there that's about a pint, almost a quart, perhaps. Oh, it's about a half, half an hour. Cherries do not, uh, sweet cherries do not release a lot of juice, so uh, it's a very precious product once you got it. You can see the juice coming up in the tube, uh, indicating that uh, things are things are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and pretty soon it'll be time to draw some juice off. This is about 45 minutes. I'm going to take another peek here, and remember always to use your hot pads because that steam burns very easily. So uh, there you go. We've got a little over, it uh, looks like a little over a quart of juice down in there. And you'll notice those cherries are still very firm. Uh, they're going to be, we're going to be able to use them for other products uh, after we draw the juice off. So I've got my uh, stainless steel jar holding pan. Put the jar in there and uh, pull the uh, hose off the side. There you go. And you can notice I'm not wearing anything on my hand. That's because I'm kind of a leather-faced veteran about all of this, but I suggest you have a mitt on your hand so the steam coming up from the jar uh, doesn't give you any burns. So there we have our full jar. Grabbing the band and the lid. Setting it on top nicely, and then I remember that I don't have uh, uh, the band. That was the ring in the lid. I don't have the band to screw down on top. So Making sure that's nicely aligned. There we go. And just a finger tightening there. Uh, that's important. Uh, we don't want to cramp it, clamp it down too tight. That will uh, damage the seal. And you can water bath from this point, uh, following your uh, extension service uh, guidelines for safe water bathing. 15 minutes for a quart. Well, all right then, uh, that's the first quart of juice coming off of this batch of uh, Bing cherries. So uh, I'm going to let this uh, percolate a little bit longer and then I'll pull the rest of the juice off uh, in the same method that I demonstrated. So uh, this stuff is very concentrated, very tasty, 
um, and it's kind of precious because you don't get a lot off of Bing cherries like I said in the beginning. So I would recommend uh, doing some simple syrup and uh, you can find some recipes for that on the blog as well. Uh, and also uh, you could uh, use it for uh, making mixed drinks. It's very concentrated so you don't need a lot. Makes an awesome daiquiri, a very good um, margarita. So all sorts of things you can do with it. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, please keep an eye out for other tutorials. They'll be coming soon. And uh, from Mehulisa Products and me, Daniel Hala, have a great day and enjoy juicing with your Mehulisa steam juicer from Finland.